With all livestock, uh, cattle included, it's a great idea initially to look at them from a distance without really disturbing them to get a sense for their general well-being. Prey animals will sort of shore themselves up when they realize that they're being watched. So an inspection from a distance gives you a good baseline of how they're really feeling. As these two steer walked up, it gave me a great opportunity to look for any signs of lameness, were their feet burned, is there any asymmetry to their legs, is one more swollen than the other, any cuts or wounds. These are our dairy breed. So the Jerseys and the Holstein breeds tend to be a little bit more domesticated uh, than some of the beef breeds. However, we never make an assumption that it's safe to go into a pen with the cattle when we're called out. Oftentimes we're there to assess their well-being, to get them some feed and water, um, to check in with the veterinarian if we see anything that we don't like. These steer here are uh, a great example of um, animals that are bright, alert, they're responsive, they're looking to me for food. If you look at their top lines, they have a relaxed top line, a little bit of a bend in the top line. The bones that you see over their pelvis, their pin bones, are normally that prominent in this, um, in this breed, so it's not that they are too thin. In fact, these animals look quite good. Um, but that's their normal conformation. You can see that their ears are up and moving, their eyes are up and moving. They're, um, you know, they appear to uh, understand that a human is friendly in this case. A beef cow, you would not expect to come this close to a fence. Um, and these are the things that we look for. A, an animal that's been injured in the fire or that has smoke inhalation will often have a very different appearance. Either they will hang back away from the rest of their herd or as they walk up, they will have a slow stilted gait or limping gait where they have a head bob at the walk. Oftentimes um, when they stop, they will have a roached appearance to their back. So instead of this nice sort of relaxed um, top line that you'll see, you're gonna see a curved appearance with feet underneath them, head lower, ears lower or back. And those are often signs that the animal is experiencing some discomfort. In severe uh, smoke inhalation cases, you will actually see white froth at the mouth and nostrils. And instead of the chin and nose having this nice definition where you see that there's a little bit of an undercut um, on, after the jawline, you'll see something called bottle jaw where the face has lost its definition and you've got more of a cone appearance to the um, to the face and uh, if we see that in combination with white frothy fluid that's a sign of severe smoke inhalation and lung burn and something that needs veterinary attention. So the main things that we're looking for in the cattle are um, can they walk up comfortably for food? Are they interested in food? Are they limping? Do they have a swollen limb or one limb that's a different size than the other? In the cows, does she have a burnt udder? If you're able to, when you feed, throw hay, if she comes up, take a peek and look up. Unfortunately, uh, female cattle will burn their udders in, um, in grass fire. And um, again, looking for that pain stance. Are they comfortable or are they showing signs of discomfort? And then you can report that to your supervisor. When you first arrive on scene to a um, property that has cattle, one of the very important things to do is to assess their enclosure and make sure that their fencing is still intact. It's not unusual after these large scale fires for part of the fencing to burn down. And so we do recommend that you walk the perimeter and make sure that if our plan is to shelter these animals in place, that they still have a viable enclosure. Um, it's also great to assess the, uh, the pen for an appropriate uh, gate or opening. If we do need to send a trailer to pick these animals up, can we back a trailer right up to the gate and can we load them that way? And then a very important feature is do they have water? Cattle have large fermentation vats in their abdomen called a rumen. That's why we call them ruminants. And that rumen is capable of storing water um, much more effectively than in a horse, for example. If a cow or a steer 
goes for more than 48 hours without water, they can um, become dehydrated. And one of the big problems that we face in these large-scale evacuations where people are, are out of their homes for several days in a row is the animals go without water and then we come upon them and we fill their trough and that is actually a mistake if the animal has been without water you suspect that it's been without water for more than in this case a day or two it's a good idea to contact your supervisor and come up with a plan for reintroducing water because as they become dehydrated their brain actually accumulates some of that saline or salt and when you reintroduce water um, uh, free at ad libitum or you allow them to have as much water as they want their brain which is dehydrated will absorb that water and you can actually get water toxicity so um, when in doubt if you notice that there's no water and that they're really looking for water talk to your supervisor and come up with a plan to reintroduce water A great way to figure out how cattle are feeling is to throw them some hay. <clears throat> They're often going to be hungry, and this is a good indication that these guys are feeling well. They're bright, they're uh, eating vigorously, they came right up to the food. Um, in many cases, you will have uh, hay left on site um, on a ranch to, to feed the animals um, and you want to feed them something they're used to eating. If there is no feed on site, that's a good reason to call the rancher and ask them uh, what they normally feed and try and get that to them. Uh, when in doubt, we'll usually feed a, a mild grass hay to animals until we better understand what they need. Uh, but many cattle are maintained on uh, alfalfa hay. That being said, it's really important to understand that, that ruminants, uh, cattle, goats, sheep, they all rely on the health of their rumen, which is a big um, fermentation vat in their abdomen, uh, to digest their food properly. And they require a relatively um, normalized pH of their rumen, meaning if you make a sudden diet change with these guys, especially if you add in grain or chicken feed, something they're not used to eating, you can actually make them really sick. So it's important to recognize that you can use a little bit of grain to shake and rattle, to get the animals over, to get a feel for their welfare and how they're walking, but you do not want to add grain at any volume to their diet unless you have very specific instructions from the rancher to do so. So when in doubt, um, go light on feed and go with a grass type hay until you have more information. And uh, these two animals live together and they're good friends, but what you will find is that it makes good sense to spread the hay out um, a fair distance in between animals uh, to make sure that they don't end up fighting over feed. And again, you can use this time from outside the pen um, to look at them while they eat, make sure that you're not noticing any swollen limbs, uh, any uh, abrasions, uh, burns. Uh, are their eyes comfortable and open? Um, is there anything coming from their nose? Uh, those, those sorts of details that'll give you a good idea of, of what's going on. In most cases during a disaster, Cattle ranchers have a plan for their animals. They have the equipment uh, to load them. They have the knowledgeable uh, teams and staff to stay safe around these animals. And so um, as far as Napa cart is concerned, in many cases, our role is to go in either shelter in place to assist feeding or to assess the health and welfare of animals if they're in a remote area where the owner can not get back to see them. If we are asked to evacuate cattle or move cattle, we would do so with the help of an experienced rancher or cattleman or woman who could um, provide that, that um, safe guidance in getting these large animals into a trailer and into a safe location. As you can imagine, 
these animals have an incredible amount of power and force and even these steer who are halter broke and they're friendly if they want to get from point A to B and you're in their line, um, they will go right over you. And so it is very important to um, assess these animals from the other side of a fence. Realize that a bull um, or a cow with her calf um, can be aggressive. They can charge you and they can actually hit you through a fence. So don't rely on a fence um, to be your safety uh, a wall, meaning keep your body parts away from the fence when you're looking at these guys because if they are um, feeling protective, they can hit the fence with enough power that, that, that you could be injured. So um, proceed with respect when you're dealing with, um, with cattle. If you inspect this guy from a distance, you'll notice that he has a refined um, muzzle here below his nostrils and mouth and then he has a wider jaw and then it becomes refined again into his neck down into his brisket which is a natural variation of his anatomy here. Animals that are suffering from severe um, pulmonary injury will develop something called bottle jaw or ventral edema in which case a lot of this definition goes away and what you see is a generalized thickening of the face such that the thickness at the cheek actually extends all the way to the mouth, if that makes sense. You lose that concavity, that definition, it's called bottle jaw. And oftentimes that brisket area will become much larger and heavier as edema goes to, towards gravity or is, is drawn down. You'll see that the, um, the bottom line of the cow or the steer becomes uh, very dependent and large. And if you're seeing something like that, especially in combination with white foam coming from the nostril, um, any open mouth breathing, uh, hunched appearance, that is a very worrisome sign. He's got a bigger brisket than this one. And some breeds don't have much of a brisket. It just, it's breed dependent, but he's got a pretty problem. I want people to realize that's a normal. That's normal. Because okay. he's got nice, like he's got all the contours. When they lose all their contours is when you're in trouble.